So today I'm gonna share with you guys how I like to do fake tattoos. And this is gonna be very useful if you're gonna go as Post Malone for Halloween. You just don't wanna commit to the face tats, which is totally understandable. Or if you know you just wanna freak out your grandma and share with her a tattoo that you got done that you know she would not approve of. Uh, either or, it makes for a great prank or for a great makeup. So the first thing that you wanna do is sketch out the tattoo that you wanna recreate. Now this is a rose that I had drawn previously that I knew that I wanted to recreate on my arm. And I'm just gonna omit the banner out of that. But um, this obviously isn't a tutorial on how to draw, but you wanna make the tattoo something that you would be able to paint and draw out. So it can be as intricate as you want or as simple as you'd like. Next up, you're gonna wanna take some transfer paper. Now you can buy these at like art supply stores. I was actually running low, so I had made these transfers previously, so I'm just using the old transfer paper. It doesn't work as good the second time, but I had no more, so I had no other choice. So what you wanna do is just trace that onto the transfer paper with like a little Sharpie. It doesn't need to be necessarily super neat or anything too precise. It's just to kind of map it all out. Next up, we're gonna take some Dettol. Dettol, I don't even know if that's how I say it. It is like a cleaning household supply, and I don't really understand the science behind this, but this actually works really good for doing transfers. This is the technique that they use in like film and TV when they need to recreate tattoos on actors. Something about it just makes the ink or the Sharpie marker like bleed onto your skin really well. So you just kind of wanna press that onto the skin, almost like you're doing like a water transfer temporary tattoo like when you were a kid. Um, and this will just help get the outline onto your skin. Like I said, since I was using already used transfer paper, this transfer didn't you know, work the best, but you know what, it does its job. Obviously it would work better if you had fresh paper though. Then I'm gonna take my alcohol activated palettes. These palettes are absolutely incredible for any special effects makeup. So what I'm gonna do is go into the black color. I'm gonna douse the color in some alcohol, take a really fine, precise little brush, and basically start with the outline. Obviously you can draw on your tattoo however you like to draw or paint. Um, my technique though, I like to do like the outline first and then I start to fade and um, shade in after there. So basically with these paints, they're great since they do have a lot of translucency to them, depending on how much alcohol you mix in with the product. You can either get a really opaque color or something a bit more watered down and really good for shading. So this is definitely like the key factor to doing any realistic tattoo versus just drawing on your arm with a Sharpie. This is just mm, so believable. It wears really well since it's not activated by sweat or water, so it'll last all day. Um, alcohol is the only way to activate it and to remove it. So yeah, you're just gonna kind of build it up in paint like you normally would. Wood. Now next up, we're gonna go in and start to shade. Obviously this is very dependent on the tattoo that you choose, but for something like this, which is like kind of a realistic rose, um, we're gonna wanna add some shading in there. And this is really what I think takes the tattoo to like the next level. So yeah, I'm just kind of playing with the amount of alcohol that I have in mixed in with the paint and get more of a watered down color. And I'm just gonna slowly like add some gradients and some shadows and really create the dimension of the rose on my arm. So what I also like to do, I take the 99% alcohol and I actually put it in the lid of the palette too. And that almost acts as like a little bit of an eraser because if I did a line that I don't like, I just go into the straight alcohol and then kind of remove and clean up any edges. Also, it's really good to help blend out any colors and um, you'll kind of get the technique as you play around the paints a bit more. Now this is the part that kind of gets a little tricky. Obviously when you are doing a tattoo transfer, the image is going to be in reverse. So when you are looking at your reference image, just keep in mind that everything is backwards. Uh, something to note if you are doing text as well, because I've done this before where I write something out without reversing it prior, and then it goes on your arm and the text is completely backwards. So just, just be mindful of that. Um, but yeah, it's especially it was especially difficult this one because it was on my forearm and it was upside down So getting the shadow right and where the light hits it was a little interesting I kind of I messed up in some areas, but um, this is why it helps to have a reference image Okay, so now that I'm pretty much done with the painting part of the tattoo We're gonna go in with some foundation and this is really what's gonna kind of add the effect of another layer of skin Or like an aged tattoo often tattoos unless they're brand new and super fresh. They're not a true black color They tend to be a bit more like blacky blue um, so depending on the age that you want your tattoo to look, you can add more or less foundation. I normally like to mix two different colors of foundation, but not really mix it improperly. So that way when I stipple on top with a sponge, it adds a little bit of dimension of skin tone and just creates a bit of variance. So I'm just gonna lightly do a layer of that. The foundation that I chose was the Makeup Forever one, which is more of like a medium coverage foundation. Um, I would recommend something a little more either on the sheer side, or sheer to medium, just so it's not too full coverage. Then just to set that foundation in place, we're gonna take some translucent powder. You can literally use whatever translucent powder you have, just as long as it doesn't have any shimmer or pigment to it. You just wanna lightly dust over top. I always feel like an archeologist when I get to that stage. Um, but yeah, there you go. There is the finished fake tattoo. 
Um, you can see the uh, foundation really added more of that bluey tinge to it, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So there you go. Let me know uh, what you end up using this for, if you use this for your Halloween look or just, you know, to prank your grandma. But yeah, I'll see you guys very soon. I hope you liked it. Bye.